You know, it's funny you should say that because a lot of folks, uh, they assume I zip line. I do zip lining. Um, I don't, you know, not anymore or ever. Uh, I think the problem would be the, the speed you're falling with, right? Especially the more you weigh. I mean, I might straight up just break that, uh, break, break the line. I eat a lot of Chipotle, to be honest with you. Steve, want to hear from GetRubix.com. And we're going to do a two-part series, maybe, unless there's more, of how to onboard existing devices into Intune. Um, it's kind of part of the cloud native journey. And uh, there, there's going to be, you know, as much as we want to be cloud native as fast as possible, there's going to be these intermediate steps. So we're going to go over two ways to do them. Today, we're going to take a look at just doing it with straight group policy. And tomorrow or Thursday or whenever, we're going to take a look at co-management. So that's, yeah. I mean, if you want to go zip lining, that's no problem. I would just recommend you do it and don't talk to me about it. And, we'll, you know, that's fine. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start off with our trusty whiteboard. Um, so we're going to assume everything is hybrid joined for this. If you're not in a hybrid joined state, just go ahead and hybrid join. There's instructions all over the place. No real reason for, for me to get into it. And uh, let's look at what that does. Okay, so the PCs are in a hybrid joined state from the domain there they can be seen in entra and i'll just show you what that looks like in my tenant i have two devices here that are hybrid joined um you can see there's no mdm uh, no owner it's just the device in this hybrid state and um, these are the same two you'll see if i switch over to my domain controller we can see i have a workstations ou and i have the two pcs in here so they're domain joined and hybrid joined um so okay so how do we tell them to hop in Intune, right? So it's it's not going to be automatic just by being hybrid joined, right? It's not like it's not like entry joined. So what we have to do is we have to create a, a group policy object on the domain. Okay, so this group policy will tell the PCs that as long as they're hybrid joined, go ahead and enroll to Intune. Simple enough, right? Okay. So what we got to do is we have to create that policy. So we're going to head back over to our domain controller and we're going to open up our group policy uh, manager and we're going to create a new object and we're going to call this Intune Enroll and we'll go ahead and we'll edit that and we're going to go down to policies, administrative templates, windows, components and the category we're looking for is mdm so you can see there's two policies here we want this first one enable automatic mdm enrollment using default azure ad credentials um okay so when you set this to enabled and then under select credential type to use you want to select user credential right because th what this will do is this will check to make sure that user has a license and we won't have a problem with uh, with enrollment. But here is a question. So I created that. Now we have the policy here. Um, how am I going to assign this? So let's say I have my workstations OU and I have two PCs inside of that. So the, the workstations OU already has default um, GPO settings assigned to it. Right, so it's getting a bunch of things like like device restrictions, features, and things like that. So let's say I want to put one of these in Intune. I really only want to target this GPO to one device. Um, so what I would do is I can create an OU inside of this for that one PC. So now I have an Intune OU that I can specifically target this with. I can just say it applies to there. So now this device will be enrolled in Intune. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our OU. And let's go ahead and create one inside of it. Call new organizational unit. We'll call this Intune PCs. Okay. Now, I want to put uh, this 001 device in there. And there we go. All right, so now you can see I have my new... Um, OU with the PC in there. But the problem is it's going to inherit everything from the default 
settings. So my default settings aren't crazy, but it's, let's take a look at it. So you can see I have kind of basic stuff. I have some BitLocker policy, some Windows components, pretty standard stuff. Um, we kind of looked at this when we looked at group policy analytics last time, but here's the thing. I've already migrated these to Intune, so I don't need, I don't want to have duplicates. So what I actually want to do is twofold, right? I want to assign the Intune enroll policy. Um, I want to link it to this OU, but then I want to block the inheritance from what's happening in workstations. So this means I would have to make sure this is well blocked off from this and it can't touch it, right? So I only want this touching the outer OU. Now, of course, if for some reason, you, if for some reason you have some policies, you don't, you didn't move it in tune yet and uh, you want them to still apply, you wouldn't be blocking inheritance. You'd have to figure out something uh, more nuanced. Um, in the spirit of going cloud native, I highly recommend you shift your policies first. Um, the whole point of onboarding stuff to Intune is to have one control plane for your new devices going cloud native and autopilot and your current fleet having as much cloud control as possible. Okay, so in that case, I need to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit block inheritance, right, on the new Intune PCs OU. So they are no longer going to receive those policies. Then I'm going to link the Intune enroll object there. Okay, so it should get that. And we can have it enforced. And that should do it. So now by this PC being in this OU, and if I want to keep adding PCs in there, two things are going to happen. They're going to get enrolled into Intune, and they're going to be exempt from the default GPOs. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so back on the client device, we can force a policy sync by running PowerShell as administrator, and we'll just run GP update force. All right, so that's been complete. Um, what we're going to notice next is if you want to make sure that that took effect, if you open task scheduler, uh, you do have to run it as administrator as well. And what we will do is we will go here under library, Microsoft, Windows, enterprise management. Okay. So if you see here under enterprise management, um, it looks like at 430. Yeah. So this is as of just now. Um, this task is set and what this does is this attempts to enroll the device in Intune. Um, let me actually go ahead and refresh this. Task has not. Oh, well that's done. It deleted itself. Interesting. Um, let's go take a look. If I go back to my devices and hit refresh, take a look at this. 001 is now onboarded into Intune. All right, there we go. So it's compliant, it's corporate uh, ownership. And if we look at device configuration, it should start receiving some, but you could see they let you know on top that it could take a while, but I'll be able to get apps. You can see got install status. It's already starting on the apps. I'll be able to use the local admin password. That's already applied, right? Um, so you can see uh, I got everything I need here really. So. There you go. I went from having a domain join only device managed with group policy to Intune managed. This is probably one of the more common ways we're going to onboard existing fleet into Intune. And as long as there's connectivity to the domain controller for it to receive the policy, it, it puts you right in Intune, like no issue. So, and, and you know, we're not going to, we shouldn't hit any policy conflicts because we blocked the inheritance and you're going to be able to remotely manage it. Um, deploy apps, things like that. So it's a really great way to do it. Next time we're going to look at what to do if we're already using SCCM, endpoint configuration manager, whatever you want to call it. We're going to look at how to use co-management as another way to get devices up there. So we'll be seeing you.